Hello and welcome back to the Oak National Academy Assembly episode 7. Hannah, did you get it? Get what? The present we sent you. Oh, do you mean these? Uh, yes. You're welcome. Thanks guys, it's um... Great! Why did you get me these exactly? Really, Hannah? Why have you got me these? Seriously, what on earth are these for? We know that you've been struggling lately and have been a bit weary. So we got you the wheels. Why? Last week you said you were too tired to catch up. Come on, Hannah, you've got to admit that was a really good joke. We've been gearing up for that one and it didn't fall flat. Ha ha, very funny, but pack it in you lot, because today we're talking about kindness. Unfortunately, kindness in the 21st century gets a little bit lost in the midst of bad news. If you watch the news or read the paper, it's not always good news. Meg Cannon is an author, filmmaker and spoken word artist from Essex and she sums up what it can feel like pretty well. I sit there and I wonder whether kindness is dying. You see, we're sitting in a coffee shop, her eyes are down, she's crying. She tells me how they pushed her through stuff, spread rumours lying. I know I should just ignore it. She said, it's hard, but I'm trying. And I see this lady by the side of the road. She's old, waiting there in the cold, but no car, no person lets her by. Why? And I see words written online that are so unkind, words that can leave a mark on your mind. Unkindness, you see it everywhere, from violence and abuse to refusing to share, to pushing someone out of the group, or laughing at her hair, or ignoring that person struggling over there. We'll come back to that later. The world we live in can appear pretty grim at times. And it's really easy to get depressed about it. But that's only one side of the story. Good news is not as readily reported as bad news, but good things are happening. Here are some secondary school students with a glimpse of some of the acts of kindness that have been going on during the COVID-19 pandemic. So I thought what I'd do is I'd increase the number of times I tutor two girls on a weekly basis and they have special learning difficulties so it can be really hard on their parents with the constant supervision and the help that the parents have to give them so I thought I'd help out. During this lockdown I have been a maths tutor for my younger siblings and my younger cousins. Whenever they're doing their maths homework and they need a little bit of help or assistance I go in and help them. I came to school and found out that my friend had not done his homework which was due in on that day. So I gave up my lunch time and helped him with his work. I showed my kindness because at lunch, someone I knew hadn't eaten the entire day and was very hungry. So I decided to buy her something to eat. I've felt happiest where I've been baking with my family. I sent over a few recipes and photos of the cakes I baked to my school and they sent them over to the NHS. And I got um, quite a few postcards and let like about the spa. I've been writing some cards to elderly people in our community who have been lonely during lockdown. I've now written more than 20 cards and have even received some back. I sang a song for my nan. I turned up with my speaker system and I sang the song to her because she loves it when I sing to her. Like the mountains in springtime. People started coming out and then I sort of realised there's more to this. It's not just about me singing to my nan. It's about everyone coming together and enjoying themselves in lockdown. Thanks guys, great stuff. It's not always easy to be kind or do the right thing. You're about to see film from a hidden camera experiment. What would you do in a similar situation?
saw that clip, you may have thought someone would put their hand in and take some of the money. In the end, no one did. It's probably the case that if you left it there long enough, someone would have taken something. But it does show that deep down, we do know what's right from wrong. It's almost like we're programmed, wired, or created to do good, to show kindness. The Bible tells us that we are handmade by a God who knows and loves us. And it tells us that we are made in His image, which is part of the reason why deep down we all love kindness. Christians believe that we know what kindness looks like because God is a loving God who performed the ultimate act of love and kindness by sending His Son Jesus to earth 2,000 years ago. In a book of the New Testament called Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says this, be kind and compassionate to each other, forgiving one another, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Amazing. Love it. Here are some students from St. Michael's Academy with a prayer and activity for us around kindness. So, how can we show kindness to others? Here are some suggestions inspired by what some of us have been doing during lockdown. Could you bake for your local key workers, family or friends? Could you call someone or send a card to encourage them? Could you help out at home or run a family games evening? Could you go shopping for someone who can't go out? Could you tell someone how much you appreciate them? Could you record some music? or a song for someone. Could you pray for someone? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the loving kindness you show us in sending Jesus to die on the cross and to pay the price for our sins. Remind us that kindness is not weakness, but an amazing gift and a fruit of your spirit that we can all share with those we meet. Give us opportunities to treat others with kindness. Our neighbors, teachers, families and even people we don't know. Help us to be patient, to respond with kindness in each situation, even if we are frustrated or feeling angry. May our kindness transform the lives of others and may we be able to inspire others to pay it forward and to do the same. As we move on in a world transformed, may kindness become our natural response to everyone. Amen. Thanks, St. Michael's. Do you remember Meg's spoken word piece from the beginning of the episode? We paused it at a low moment, but it doesn't end that way. It gets better and better. Check this out. The news is full of hate and sadness and corruption and war. I just don't see kindness around much anymore. But who am I to speak? I'm often so unkind. I gossip and I'm selfish, it just comes naturally. But actually, recently, I've been feeling like I want to change. Do you know what? Being kind, I've realised it's actually brave and it's strong when you offer friendship to someone who doesn't feel they belong, or when you give your attention, or when you give your time. In that moment, your light will shine. We live in a world that says, live for yourself, compete and tread on others to get status or wealth. But could we push back against that darkness of competition and greed and be kind, be thoughtful and look out for those in need? What if we could be the generation to revive kindness, bring it back to life, give it back its breath and save it from death, treating others as we'd like to be treated? Living a life of kindness is an incredible way to live. And when you make that daily choice, you'll gain more than you give. And soon, kindness will become a habit, a brilliant, beautiful habit. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. There are gonna be people you don't want to be kind to, but still give kindness against everything inside that says, just walk past or hurt them back. Respond with kindness, one courageous act. Why? Because it will change you. And together, we could change the world. And in the end, we'll see kindness everywhere when we dare to care. Thanks, Meg. 
we can all get on board with that. And thank you for joining us. We leave you with Canterbury Cathedral Choir singing Stay With Me Lord. See ya! Take care! And be kind. The way that I can express my faith is through singing and the Cathedral Choir really helps me to do this. This is one of my favourite pieces that we sang on our recent tour of America.